Welcome back, troglodytes, to the Troglies Guitar Show. What's this SG standard doing with dot inlays? We're supposed to have block inlays, aren't we? Oh well, must just be a factory anomaly. Let's sell this as an SG standard. Oh boy, I see that all the time, and I bought this guitar strictly to teach this lesson. This guitar, despite looking just like an SG standard, except for the inlays, is it's not a standard. This is what is considered an SG special in the late 70s era. Now again, just looking at it, well, besides our changed parts here, the only thing different that you can see is the dot inlays, because this is what a regular SG standard looks like. And now you switch back to this one, and you're probably in agreement with me here that they look very similar. But what are the differences to an SG special and an SG standard? Visually, again, we're talking about the dot inlays here. But something you can't see, these are very similar to like a The SG that we discussed a few weeks ago. These have a traditional nut width. So if you hate that really small nut width on the SG standards of the 70s, find yourself a special because sure you don't get the nice block inlays, but at least you have a traditional feeling nut width, which means you have a more traditional feel up and down the neck. The width doesn't change too much. And there's one last cosmetic thing that's different. You don't have binding on the neck. Now not all SG standards have binding on the neck in this era either, and that's because they came in two iterations. There is the unbound ebony version, and then there is the bound rosewood version. This one, as we can see, is rosewood without binding. So that's the three main differences between an SG standard and an SG special. As far as I'm aware of, they all have the same electronics, they have the same harmonica bridge and tailpiece, and the pickups would originally have been tarbacks. They have the same truss rod cover. These even retained the Mother of Pearl Gibson logo with the crown. But something that might actually be better about these specials is most of these appear to have been made in Kalamazoo that I've seen show up. Now, as we were talking yesterday, a lot of people prefer the Kalamazoo made guitar simply because, hey, it's the original factory, it's where a lot of the original workers were still at during this period of time. This one is a very late 77, so Nashville has been around for about two or three years. So the specs of this one is a mahogany body. It is a multi-piece body. I believe it's three-piece, just like the SG standards of the era. And it does retain the mahogany neck. Remember, from 76 to around 82, Les Pauls switched over to maple necks. The SGs, Flying Vs, and Explorers were spared from that. This one, again, has the rosewood fretboard. And we've got vintage DiMarzios in here. They are awesome sounding. Now, I'll tell you guys, I've owned this thing for about five months. I haven't really played it much except for the initial check-in, but when I went to play this demo for this guitar, I had this instant bonding factor with it. There's something about this jet black finish when you get it in the light just right, it has a slight greenish hue to it because of the yellowing of the clear coat. And then pair it with these disgusting looking double cream pickups. They have a great vintage patina to them that just makes them look gnarly. When they installed the DiMarzios, they also added these mini toggle switches. I wish I could tell you what they do. I know they're hooked up but I cannot really differentiate any type of sound difference between the two positions. So what I am guessing they are is a series parallel switch, because for whatever reason, my ears cannot tell the difference between that, but apparently some people can. 
So overall, I kind of find myself digging these SG specials a little bit more than SG standards, simply because they have a more traditional feeling neck. And I'm guessing a lot of people out there would as well. So the next time you see somebody trying to sell this as a dot neck SG standard, now you know what it actually is. So now that we've learned about this Gibson SG special, Let's go ahead and hear how it sounds. we know how this guitar sounds, let's go ahead and review its condition. This guitar is a well-played road warrior. You can see the lacquer has aged very nicely, and you've got some scratches and light nicks and dings on the face of the headstock. And the truss rod is just about out of room. It needs to be reset in the near future. Your rosewood fretboard is in good shape. It was just cleaned and oiled, and you've just got some fret wear here. Nothing that you'll necessarily have to worry about right away. But everything is in good shape here. The face of the guitar is completely littered with scratches, nicks, and dings. 
you can see one small area right here. I'm not sure how they did it, but they kind of rubbed through the finish there. That'd be easy to touch up if you wanted me to. I've got one of those black lacquer pens, but I just suggest leaving it as is. It's kind of a cool character mark. You've got lots of nicks and dings on the face of the guitar. You definitely don't have to be scared to play this one. Again, we've got some DiMarzios in here with what I am guessing are series and parallel switches. They're kind of in an inconvenient spot. They're really close to the knobs, but hey, it's better than adding additional routing to the guitar. But the pots are original. They're actually fairly clean and you've got beautifully aged speed knobs. Back of the headstock, serial number 73557157. And you're going to notice there is no Made in USA stamp. The only time I would ever tell you that that is okay is A, it needs to be Kalamazoo made. And then for whatever reason, sometimes they just didn't stamp it. I've seen this a lot on Kalamazoo made ones. Usually if it's a Nashville made guitar, it might be hard to see, but it's there. But something about the Kalamazoos, sometimes they just didn't stamp them. But they did stamp this a factory second. Now does that mean the neck is twisted and warped or there's something crazily wrong with this guitar from the factory? No, a factory second in this era simply meant there was a finish blemish. Now it's impossible to know what that is at this point in time, but something as simple as, oh, there's a little ding right here. We have to mark it as a second to sell it. That's kind of what was going on. The worst part about a factory second is the second stamp itself, and that's why a lot of collectors will shun seconds. But they make great players, so don't ever shy away from one that's stamped second. You can see here it is a three-piece mahogany neck. No breaks, cracks, or repairs to this. You do have a volute. And this is a super, super, super 60s neck profile. It is very thin when you think that sg wizard neck type thing that's exactly what this guitar's got going on the back again it's pretty chewed up with a lot of buckle worming it's not necessarily rash though because it hasn't broken the finish but it is definitely excessive wear on the back a little bit somebody had a huge belt buckle with this one it looks like there was a sticker here at one point in time. You can kind of see the shadow of it. We'll take a look around the edges of this one. I really like this black finish. I wish I could find an SG standard in this one. Because even though I like the neck better on this one, there's something about those mini block inlays that I like. Only other thing to mention on this one is your bottom strap button is a Dunlop strap lock. And then the top one is just a replaced regular strap button. So if you're wondering why I was sitting during this playing demo, it's because you can't really put a strap on it at this point in time, unless you have one that's just currently set up with one strap lock. Now we'll take a look under black light. You can see everything's good on the top, except for once again, that area I was talking about where the finish has been rubbed through. Beautiful patina on these double creams. Take a quick look along the edges. There are a few areas where the finish was kind of broken, but not by a lot. And here's where we can see that sticker once again was on there at one point in time. But surprisingly, again, no finish was broken by that buckle worming stuff. Your neck pocket is good. Always want to check that on an SG. And the neck itself is good. You can see you've got some clear coat wear right there, though. But thankfully, no breaks, cracks or repairs to the headstock. And the face is also glowing the way I would want to see. This SG comes in an era correct case. It's not the original case for this one. This is actually the original case to that hacked up SG. I ended up parting that guitar out and selling the husk to somebody who promised to send me update photos. 
So we will see that guitar restored, but I kind of liked the way it was, so I thought I would give it to somebody who would probably restore it properly. So in this case, it's got some wear and tear. It's got clasps instead of latches, which I don't really like as much, but it's just kind of a sign of the times. And you have a functioning handle. The case does not support the lid at all. It just kind of flops open. So you've got that to deal with. And honestly, these cases are garbage. There's very little padding to them. Maybe they had more when they were brand new and you've only got a single neck rest. But hey, an error correct case is an error correct case. This is just about what this guitar would have came with regardless. Now, despite all I just said, it is a good enough case. The one neck support, it's at such an angle that the headstock is definitely way off the floor, so that's good. And there's not a ton of room for the guitar to move up and down, and side to side, it is very solid. So, they're just not the best padded cases in the world, but they do their job. If you think you might be interested in being the next owner of this Gibson SG Special, not a dot neck standard, check out the reverb listing. There is a link in the description. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.